Hi, and welcome to Through the Grace. Um, now, I want to give you guys a warning before I, I proceed with the teaching in this video. Um, seminaries are not something that I'm very fond of, okay? So your pastor or your church has uh, most likely gone to a seminary. And the thing I don't like about seminaries, even though they can teach a lot of really good things, they act as though they have all the answers to all of the Bible, and their pastors, the, the pastors that they produce, um, are not allowed to continue to learn from the Bible. It's, it's locked down, it's blocked off, um, there's no more continued learning or letting the Holy Spirit lead in Scripture any longer after the seminary um, has taken effect, okay? Um, I'm not bound by any seminary. Um, I have gone to uh, biblical classes before and things like that. I am an ordained minister, okay? But I am completely free, which is why my teachings are directly from the Bible and they are pertinent to what's happening today, okay? Um, as a side note, a lot, of, a lot of churches are ran like businesses, okay? So if you take this teaching I'm about to give you and you take it to your pastor, um, it's most likely that that pastor is going to look at this as like this challenge, like, well, I might get kicked out of the business if I adhere to this or I agree to what my church member is, is showing me here. Um, it's just this is not what they taught me in seminary. And I'm not allowed to say this because I belong to this group, that group, the other group. And they're just not allowed. OK, so think about that. All right. Now, what I'm talking about in this video is Matthew chapter 24 and this this one phrase that Jesus used talking about generation. OK, when Jesus in 20 in Matthew chapter 24, verse 34 said, verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, we know that in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is talking about the last days. OK. He also, in my opinion, he's, he's talking about the destruction of the temple, A.D. 70, and he's talking about the last days. And that's based on what the disciples initially asked him. But we're not doing a teaching. I'm not doing a teaching on Matthew 24 completely today. What we are examining today is what did Jesus mean by this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled? A lot of people, when they read that, they go, what? This can't be true then. Jesus isn't the Messiah then. Because the, the generation, when he said this, they passed away. Now, I want you to hang in there with me. I'm not going to BS you on this, okay? Uh, because I'm, I'm not trying to skate around and make sense of something in such a way that is only taught in seminaries, like I said, okay? Uh, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to let the Bible define what I already started to suspect by the leading of the Holy Spirit in regards to the meaning of what does the word generation mean then, okay? We have to examine words. Now, I'm learning Spanish, okay? So I'm always relearning, like, what a, a word means, um, what is the root of that word, and why, what is that word trying to express in regards to meaning and conveying thought to somebody else, okay? So what, what I started to wonder about was when Jesus says this generation, okay, shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled well is it is it like this he's talking about the last days generation then like like oh i'm talking about this group of people in the last days and that generation of people won't go away i'm going to tell you right now here's the answer okay the word generation okay is it's a form of the word generate which is something that has been generated okay now if I, um, if I generate electricity somehow with like a machine, then I am making electricity, right? I'm generating it, okay? Um, if, I, if I go to work and I have to generate workflow, I'm going to go and I'm going to start talking to this guy over here. Hey, man, go do your job and, and talk to this other guy and then have him do his job. Now I'm generating workflow, okay? And they get moving and work starts to flow and things get done. It's productive, right? So this is the way that Jesus is talking about the word generation. He's talking about this, this new way. The followers of Christ were, were called followers of the way to begin with. And in the book of Acts, um, it says in Antioch, they were first called Christians. Christians, followers of the way, 
that is the generation. It is the thing that Christ generated, okay? This generation, this thing that I have generated, it will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. I'm going to prove it to you. Ready? Here we go. Uh, let's start in Genesis first, okay? Let's go to Genesis. I'm only going to show you like two verses here because it, it, it sums it up so greatly, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, okay? Let me get my bookmark here. What does Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 say? Now, of course, this is talking about creation, all right? Because it's right in the beginning of the Bible. So in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, it says, These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. See, if he was talking about generations like we know it with people, it wouldn't that, that word would not have been used right there, okay? There was actually no generations in that regard of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, okay? It's not generations like time periods of human beings. That's not the case of the word generations in this regard. It is, these are the generations. These are the, the, the kick-starting, okay? This is the starting, the beginning of the life force taking place of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. That's the context, the usage of the word generations in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4, okay? Now, uh, and I made these notes. I want to encourage you, make these notes um, in Matthew chapter 24, right at verse 34, okay? Make a little note there of Genesis 2 verse 4, and then make a note of Psalm chapter 14 verse 5, okay? Uh, now, what does it say in Psalm chapter 14 and verse 5? It says, um, there, were, there were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Is that only one gener generation he's talking about then? He's only in one generation of the righteous? Which one would that be? Is it the Acts generation? Like Jesus just left, he went to heaven. Oh, well, maybe it was the generation before that. The disciples that followed Jesus during his ministry. Or, oh wait, there was other righteous people. Maybe he's talking about the generation of Abraham. No, and he's not talking about the final generation either. He's talking about all of the generated righteous people. God is the one who brings faith. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Isn't that correct? So, he is the one who is in the generation of the righteous. Where else would righteousness be generated? Okay? Righteousness comes from the Lord. We live, we're saved by our, our faith, okay? Righteousness by our faith. That's how we get it. That's why we are children of Abraham, okay? Um, and I could go off on another spiel all about that, but we are God's people now. We are the generation of the righteous. He is in the generation of the righteous because he generated us. So he's in us always. When I die and my kids move forward with the gospel, they keep carrying that torch, he's still in the generation of the righteous. So, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34, after he's given the whole layout of the last days, basically, you know, and saying all this stuff's going to happen, wars, rumors of wars, the end is not yet, okay? Um, he talks about, like, uh, false Christs coming and stuff like that. Then, after all this stuff has taken place, he says, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled, okay? He's saying that the generation, the generated believers, the righteous that he has generated, because righteousness is found in Christ alone, that generation, that generated movement of in Christ, the body of Christ, will not pass away until all these things have been fulfilled, okay? So I'm going to leave you with that. Obviously, I could get into Revelation at this point, jump right into the persecution that's waiting for us, just like, you know, us taking up our cross because our master took up his cross. No servant is greater than his master. So we're, we're definitely headed towards some very trying times as the body of Christ. If the father had his son go through that, what should we expect that we're going to be going through? But it's okay because the Lord is going to be our strength. We don't need to worry about relying on our own strength. 
He is in the generation of the righteous, okay? So thank you very much for listening, you guys. For those of you who have not heard the gospel or accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is that Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and three days later he rose again from the dead. If you believe this, you put your faith on Christ today, repent of your sins, and put your faith on Christ, then make your response known to God, as it says in the book of, I think it's Second Peter, make your response known to God by getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, you guys? Thank you for your time. God bless you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. God bless you, my friends.